So, first up in the next bracket is 2021's official game of the year, Oddworld Stolestorm versus the Minnow in It Takes Two. I didn't even whiz Bam Wow start it. Oh, sorry. Oh. Whiz Bam Wow, welcome it. back to the video. Sorry. You can do that again because we can cut this. No, it's okay. It's okay. We're here now. We're keeping it. All right. Hi, guys. So part it three. Takes two. It takes two versus Odd World. Um, so we'll go to It Takes Two first. Karen, do you want to do a rundown? Sure thing. Just start. Clip is rolling. Basically, this game, um, I thought this game was phenomenal. Like, it was great. And Ferg and I already knew it was going to be pretty phenomenal because we played games by the developer a way before. Out. Yeah, we played a way out. Yeah, which was a great game. It's great co-op. It's so much fun it's so creative it's got more mature themes uh there's some bits that are pretty terrifying once here that that no oh, wait till um, you see it <laughs> if you want to if you want to check it out check out my tiktok uh <laughs> like you get some stuff like ferg, i remember Fer, ferg and i started this and we watched this and we were like what the hell that's we were we were shocked, uh, but and then there's also a load of mini games. So this game is it's spread out. It's great. It's got a great story. Um, it's great for people who don't play a lot of games because you can have someone like working with you or you know. The one thing I'd say about it is that it has to be co-op, which yeah. that's yeah. also that's one of the good things about it. But it's also one of the bad things about it because it means if you're lonely and have no one to play with like Juan then you know wow then <laughs> <laughs> you don't you can't play so but yeah that's I would say it's great it's emotional it's fantastic yeah really 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 great game um, I'm going to give the rundown of Oddworld uh, just because I have a lot of thoughts so yeah, Oddworld say... Oddworld Soulstorm oh. is a 2D platformer that was very, very heavily advertised by Sony um, at the start of the year and last Christmas time. Touted as the real sequel to the original All World, which I don't know what it's called because I've never played it. Um, admittedly, not my type of game. Um, mechanics were uh, pretty clunky, I thought. Uh, I don't want to get into review. Basically, you, you play as Abe and you're trying to free your people and you pick up minions along your way. Right now, that's me trying to put out fires, which is how I felt about fucking Fire. playing this game. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, no, it's. Uh, I mean, it's it's got some cool moments. The art style's pretty good, um, but it's just like. It just, it just felt so much less than it could be. See, especially when you have games like Crash Bandicoot and, uh, like Spyro even, or yeah. or Super Mario or something like compared to that, it is just not not the same caliber and i get they were trying to change it up by going 2.5 d's i see how the camera's turning there a little bit in the clip um it it didn't work uh i'll just get my notes on it just now karen so 2.5 d style an interesting idea abe's character is compelling he was basically a, a slave who is then the champion of the slaves to free them um the, yeah basically it's spark is but an alien uh, it's not my style of game. The art style is cool though. Uh, the ways to beat the enemies takes strategy. It can be incredibly frustrating, um, like to the point where I got to a point in the game and I just I can't get past this. Like this is nigh on impossible. And the checkpoint system because bit was part of the reason for that because it sends you so far back. Um, and the movement controls are pretty uh temperamental at times. I felt pretty clunky to be honest. I gave it a six. So. Me, I, uh, my notes on Odd World were two words. Definitely odd. <laughs> <laughs> and my my only my only argument for having it getting put in this uh, tournament was because how much it was 
advertised. Oh. Like Fergie and I, Fergie and I would be sat there, and we're like, oh, I wonder what the next like announcement's gonna be. And it was about about four or five times at each like awards or like announcement like um, things. We're sat there, and Old World comes up, and I'm like, I've seen this so many times. Like, I know, I get it. It's coming out, yeah. right? So, uh, I didn't enjoy it at all. Like, yeah, I, I, it's, it's one of those ones. It's it's odd. Like I get it. It can be fun, but it just seems so like it's so repetitive. So clunky mm-hmm. as well. I thought the controls yeah. were really clunky. And like you could get killed from miles away, and you can do nothing about it. Like and it's just yeah. like like the, like the structures to hide. You have to jump. It's like the opposite of having a structure on like the floor that you can hide behind. Yeah, yeah. You have to jump yeah. in the. T- it was a pain in the arse. And so what you get? What score I, did you give it? I give it. I give it a six. You well. give it a six. Oh, interesting. So for it takes so. two, you said. Right, so I this. Can I start off with it takes two? Huh? It's, can I start off with it takes oh, two? You, what have you played it? Oh, so what I was going to say was I personally have not played it, but my sister has played it. Uh, Victoria's played it. Oh, okay. She her Get her up in the bed. Huh? Get her, her in the video. Call her in. Get her in. Call her in. Now she's worked for um, her extent of her gaming history is Sims. Uh, she played a lot of the, ga- the GameCube back in the day, but she the game she plays now is like The Sims. So that's yeah. her thing. She loved that game. She couldn't put it down. Like her and Hads just sat and played it. Because obviously they, they both contracted COVID over Christmas, so I had to isolate over COVID. What they done over Christmas was play It Takes Two. So I think as a testament to that game that somebody who isn't into gaming at all can come into that, pick yeah. up really embrace it is a massive telltale of what it's like yeah, yeah that's have, exactly what i was saying do you have any other notes on it Cairns? Uh i said it is a fantastic co-op adventure it's got amazing uh different ways of playing the game so it's always different uh the game um of playing the game by never having the same way of playing has to be co-op that's a good and a bad part of it that's what i said i think it was great it's got references uh the mini games fantastic because that gives you a bit of competition uh between you two like you know uh it's more fun and there's a bit of exploration and all the little things that go on but i think especially for a game like that having so many different ways of playing it yeah is so important like i think that's so good so what I said about it was very fun co-op gameplay, oddly dark moments. Uh, the story was yeah. fun and interesting, but felt like it started to drag a bit near the end, I thought. Yeah, I can get that. Um, for some reason, the tournament just jumped a little bit there. Uh, uh, the need for co-op is a good thing, but also a bad thing. Um, like you say about the different styles of game cares, it's so cool. I mean, the best example of it, I thought, was maybe um, when... You escape from a squirrel's nest after fighting with squirrels and bees, and you've got an it's airplane. Hilarious. One of you, oh, this isn't really, it's just a gameplay segment. One of you is flying a plane, right? And the other one is having a Mortal Kombat style yeah. fight with a squirrel on top of the plane. And <laughs> both mechanics work perfectly. At the same time, yeah. So no good. Glitches, oh, amazing game. So, I mean, I don't know about you boys, but I think this is a pretty open and shut case for me, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. what did you score it? Oh, I scored it to two, 9 out of 10. I gave it a 9 as well. I gave it a 9 purely because Victoria can actually... Well, that's... The, the, also, for, when you said it dried, I think it it was... I think if it had been any longer, I would have said it's too long. I think it was just... Yeah. This, like the sto- When I say it dried, I mean, like, by the time we were getting to the end, the story I just like, felt I like, like... We're done. I think we're done. I think, yeah. I think, it, I think it was a well... But then I didn't I care about it, the ending as well. Like at the end of the story, I was like, "Ah, do you know what I mean?" No, I, I I enjoyed it. Right, so it takes two. I take it. Yeah. Sweet. So the next one up is Life is Strange True Color. I think I'm the only one to have completed this, right? Yeah. And I so uh, I'm. I'll happily explain Life is Strange. No, no, I'll 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 Life do it. Strange. Do you play True Colors? No. You would have had to buy no. it one. Oh no, then I haven't. No, I don't think so. Right, okay, so I'm going to do the rundown of Life is Strange. You can do Mario Party. I think you're wrong. I, sh- I should definitely be. Life is Life Strange. Is Strange Basically, Life is Strange is a 
game series which is purely based on decision making right a couple of qu- not really even quick time events but it's based on decision making and your decisions matter it's that kind of like um type of thing where i i love games like that where you're making decisions that affects the whole story uh, the difference with this is that you've got superpowers right now that superpower in this game is pretty tenuous because she feels what people feel. This is the best example I could find of it without any spoilers uh, in the clip. And that's Alex seeing someone who's very angry and beating someone up. And she feels the anger and then kicks the living shit out of the guy. Um, is that's that her... more just like general feelings though? Yeah. Let him finish, she, man. Let him she, finish. She basically, the power is that she can... She feels things, but she feels them stronger to the point she can essentially read people's minds. The best way I can think to describe it is like, uh, you know, Cal in Jedi Fallen Order, the force echoes he yes. gets. It's like that. Yes. She's basically got force yeah. echoes. What I would say, though, the story is very good. It has very high highs and very placid lows. So it's nothing bad in it, but there's points where it's got two or three moments in it where I was like, holy shit, that's amazing. And the rest of it, I was just a bit like, "All right, okay, I'm getting, I'm getting through this game, sort of thing." Um, so yeah, that's the sum up of Life is Strange. Next uh, is Mario Party, which Cairns is going to give you a quick rundown on. It's a me, it Cairns. Because Juan's also <laughs> right. Clips wrote. Oh, told you. Am I right? <laughs> oh no, Cairns, you know you have to edit that in now. <laughs> no. So Mario Super Party. I'm not going. This is the best. Switch game I've come across this year, without a doubt. Like, this game was such a good surprise because it's basically it's a board. It's reinventing the board game mm-hmm. on how to play. So, as yeah. you play, there's different. Uh, it's easy to play for everyone. Like, even if you've not played video games before, I've played it multiple times with people who've never played video games or people who've got very little video game experience. So, uh, uh-huh. you can play it with a whole family. Um, you just don't want to play with the AI or Rosalina because they're <laughs> terrible. Um, <laughs> but as you play around and uh, you basically go around, you're trying to get as many stars as possible, trying to get as much coins, and it's very competitive between everyone. I think you'll agree, Juan, that it can get quite intense yeah. when, you're, when it's getting close. Um, <laughs> but it is, it is great fun. It's got a great range of mini games. Uh, it's got a great... Um, range of maps because there's five different maps on the one that we have and you can get more so mm. I think it's and then they're all leveled as well so it's it's great for playing and yeah. everyone who everyone who I have played with with this game has thought it's incredible like it, everyone's enjoyed it and everyone's had a yeah. great time um, what I would uh, oh sorry can yeah. you on your go, on your, go, go, for, go. go for I was going to say what I would say is that I think you're you're being very generous by saying it's reinvented the board game because the series because. has oh have I? Can you again. hear me now? Yeah, just say again. Uh, I think you're being quite generous uh, by saying it reinvented uh, the board game because it, this series has been around for about 20 yeah, years. But, <laughs> I know, but I know, but I'm just saying, like, it is, the board game is. Uh, I'm not saying the single game has reinvented it, but the whole idea behind it. Oh, yeah, yeah, fair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it has reinvented it so, so you can keep playing. So, did you have any notes on it? Uh, I did. Um, I've well, lost I'd like, <laughs> I'd like to start with uh, Life is Strange Two Colours, to be honest. No, no, we'll do that second. We'll do that second, because that's how we've done every other one. I don't know why. I said, <laughs> I said it's very fun, new way of playing board games, multiple, multiple selections of board games, good content, right level of challenging, um, and you can play with anyone. Like Everyone and anyone is able to play yeah. it. It does I not matter. Help. Yeah, I have fair. very very similar notes. It's um, something that your gra- from your you know your your little cousin to your grand can play. It's like that kind of all inclusive gameplay. Yeah. The one note I have apart from that that's not exactly the same as you, Cairns, as you find out who your friends are. Very. Fucking <laughs> <fun>. <laughs> you Mate, very just, you very much find just, out who who's good, good to you and who hates you. Well, I found out very well today when Ferg and Ali just uh, bullied me. So and then Rosalina that. won. Um, and, and then you yeah. played Mario. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so my notes on it is the mini games are a real shining part of this game because it's games yeah. from obviously the rest of the series. They've taken yeah. the mini games for that and the maps. 
that that was really impressive to me. Great party game, like so much fun playing with people. Um, a couple of the maps make it quite difficult to score. For example, the wood, the uh, the yeah. I can't remember what it's called. It's the one that you're in the woods, uh, and it could use more maps. But understanding that it is a remake of maps from a different era, so yeah. uh, like I think Mario Party or Mario Super Party is the other one, uh, and that has um that has a lot more maps in it, whereas Mario Party yeah. Superstars is a remake sort of thing. So I gave it an 8 out of 10. I gave it an 8.5. Cool. I'd give, it, I'd give it an 8 as well. Cool. All right. Uh, now, Life is Strange. Cairns, do you want to start up? Yeah. Um, Juan, back to your point of, is that really a superpower? It is not a fucking superpower <laughs> at all. This game, I'm sorry. This game, I'm sorry she's... She's very good at reading people's emotions. Like, you see someone getting beaten up on the floor and she gets angry. Because she can read his him. mind. I said she you can know. read his mind. Yeah, or oh, what, what? Oh, he's attacking her. He's clearly annoyed at her. No, no, no. You hear his thoughts. Nah, nah. What's she, nah? She's, she, she's full of shit, alright? She's, she's full stop. Face. She's full of shit. She's, she's bullshitting you, Faye. That's like you, you slapping me and I go, hmm, she's definitely got something up with me. <laughs> He's never thinking, fuck this guy. And I get annoyed, and I'll hit you back. Sorry, it's, it's not. I'm sure it's got. I enjoy the idea of um, the decision making and all that, but compared to the first game, saying that is a superpower, they can fuck off. First, first, first game's, game, first game's incredible. Can, the first game, she can literally rewind time. All right, that. It's right. a superpower. Okay, you're not saying well, much. You're she's gone from being able to rewind time to being empathetic. It's to a different yeah. person. Different, it's different person. Different people. Different people. Oh, all right. Um, so. do, do you have any other notes on the game? Did you play? Uh, did you play any of the no. game? <laughs> <laughs> did you score the game? Uh, no, I didn't because I hadn't played it, so I wouldn't judge it on. Because you were like, it's it. a superhero. <laughs> she's not a superhero. I would. Uh, to be fair, my my actual point was, I don't want to play that game because they're telling me I have superpowers when I don't. Right. Okay. <laughs> so, the first note I did have is lame power question mark. Um, it's, not que- it's not a question. But, right. So there's and it's not li- power. Like I said in the description, there are some moments in this game, which is, which are just brilliant. Right. Uh, some which are okay. Uh, the pacing can get a little slow at times. The story's very, very good, um, with a couple of good twists. Not as epic as Life is Strange one. I've not played number two, um, but it's, no, it's a more con- number two. no, no, it's, uh, it's not. No. But <laughs> uh, Life is Strange. Uh, uh, the story is is quite contained. Um, well, and one thing that might get you on side with this. There is a couple of music moments in it, specifically music moments, aside from the twist, which are spine tinglingly good, as in like make you tear up with that good. There's an episode one. This isn't really a spoiler because episode one is very much the foundation of the rest of the game. But there's a rendition of uh, "Creep" by Radiohead, acoustic version, and it like makes you tear up. It's incredible. Like I mean, and that's one of the moments that was just the highest of highs, and then uh-huh. the kind of mediocre it can be a bit boring because the pacing at times i'll admit that and the power's a bit lame but then the way it actually plays into it the story is good and you care about the characters but sometimes it feels like you're in a bit of an impossible situation you don't know how you could have changed it so i gave it an 8.5 out of 10 because i actually thought it was genuinely a very good game um so yeah so i mean my vote is going to be because i think i know where the other votes are going to go um my my vote is going to be with um Life is Strange, because I think Mario Party is a remade maps. They've been drawing off a 20-year series. Life is Strange True Colors is a series that's been around for 10 years or something, but every iteration is completely different, and the gameplay gets better and better every time. No. So, Ken just voted Mario Party, and Juan, you vote Mario Party as well? I would like to pick Life of Mario Party. Uh, you, can't, you can't do that, Jesus unfortunately. Christ. So, <laughs> Mario we, Party, yeah? Right, that's yeah. cool. It's a me, a Mario Party. Oh, yes. Why is it there? <laughs> oh, it's gone, it's won! It's won! It's won! Give me the year! I don't know what the hell's going on there. Right, so next one is 
Hitman 3, do you want to give a rundown of this? Wait, Hitman 3 and what? I can't see the... Oh, Far Cry Cry 6. Far Cry 6. Okay, I'll put it either then. Right, okay, so we'll be quick on this one then, right? Yeah, yeah. On you go. Quick rundown, you've got a minute. Hitman 3, what can I say? You're a hitman and you're killing targets. Uh, That's that's about it. It's very inventive. Um, There's so many options uh, for how to do it and what you can do. Um, it's a sometimes a bit tough, especially if you get caught once and then you escape them. So then you're trying to find out without getting caught again and you've killed everyone and they know you're in a disguise and you can't switch disguise. And yeah, it's it, it can be a bit convoluted if you fuck it. So, uh... Wow, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it can be. Um, but in fairness to the game, it's, it's main idea is that it's got so many options of how you can do the hit. So you could poison the person, you could um, you could tamper with their fuel so that their helicopter crashes, you can just straight up go and shoot them if you can find them. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so many different options. You can, like, there's, I think there's one, uh, you can get them to hit a golf ball and... It explodes. Uh, explodes. Yeah. yeah. Um, my one criticism for it would be that it's only three four it's like five missions Ferg. yeah five i think i think it's five and that kind of we'll go we'll go we'll get on to that in a minute yeah, like, yeah, we'll I'm get on to those stuff in a minute so far cry 6 is basically yeah. your typical classic massive far ubisoft cry. open world far cry admittedly i think it is the best far cry since far cry 3 um the gunplay is fun you well you you you're basically the premise of this I one so did for, this bit. Did, yeah did you uh, so Basically, you are uh, you get to choose if you're male or female, Danny Rojas, right? Like from Ted Lasso, football is life, right? Nobody got that reference. No, <laughs> I, I, I don't get it, but um, but basically, Danny's a guerrilla fighter. She tried to escape the island and was, you know, once she thought she was out, they brought her right back in again, sort of thing, right? So you're basically trying to, and you're the super guerrilla. You're like the hero of the story, and you have to go around and convince everyone to join the fight. Uh, that's the premise of the game. Um, Gus Fring, I can't remember his name. What is it? Uh, Anton. No, 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 not the character, the actor. Breaking Bad. Oh, yeah, he's also in Mandalorian as well. Yeah, Giov- uh, uh, Esposito. Esposito. The guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyway, he's amazing in it. I was say. Um, but yeah, no, so it's basically, it's, it's, a cla- it's like a Far Cry game on steroids, but well polished. Yeah. Um, my note, my notes on it is the gunplay is fun, the world is very standard Ubisoft. Uh, uh-huh. It's probably the most polished, polished Far Cry to date. The best since three. Um, I'm not a big fan of how the mission cutscenes were handled. So basically, rather than actually having a video making it feel like oh this is a story thing, it feels very much like it's set up for multiplayer where you go into almost like a loading screen with a paragraph. And the guy's standing there talking to you, and it feels uh-huh. it, it just doesn't sit right with me. I'm like, oh, like, I want to be immersed in this world rather than yeah. sitting there going, I know I'm playing a video game. Uh, Castillo is a very good bad guy. I think Karen's got to a couple of points that I've got past. Yeah, I, I, I completed it where you actually go, one, he's awful, but there's another bit where you go, I, I kind of get where he's coming from. I can see yeah. what he's trying to do. Um, yeah, Amazing. And, and he steals the show, by the way, in the game. Like, he is, mm-hmm. he absolutely steals the show. Um, there's some fun, wacky side missions. Uh, and uh, there was one more thing, but I can't remember. So I gave it an 8 out of 10. If I think of the thing, I'll say it. I um, said, so my notes were, it's a compelling story. The combat and movement are actually very good. Um, yep. It's, my one thing with it is that it does feel a bit just cause-like. Yeah, I where don't... it's just a bit, it's a bit unrealistic. Not incredibly out there, but it's a bit like, like oh, so you just go uh, skydiving everywhere, like and glider everywhere, and yeah, you go through, you're blowing up all these things, and it's like one person can destroy everything, you know. And I get that's like kind of the point, but at the same time, it's a bit, you know, you know what I mean, fair when it's like it's just a bit too wild at times. Kind of want it to be brought yeah, down to yeah. earth a bit, like you're a bit like grounded. 
Well, on that on that point is that it's actually this game is actually really comparable to Halo Infinite's campaign, um, but the thing no, is, is said. oh sorry, uh, this yeah. campaign is very comparable to Halo Infinite's campaign, mm-hmm. uh, in the way that like you're saying, because it can get really chaotic in Far Cry and it feels a bit unrealistic, right? But with Halo, the rules of the world allow that, right? Whereas in yeah. Far Cry, you're meant to be a human, right? But yeah, exactly. the, on the flip side, a benefit of it against Halo is that in Halo, if you attack one guy in a base, they all know you're there. Far Cry, yeah, you yeah. could take everyone out silently, which is actually yeah, really yeah. good. It lets you approach each base slightly differently, which is fun. Um, no, which I, I agree. Was quite that's good. why I was saying like, the combat and the whole movement and the whole system, I think that's really good. So I gave it, I actually, I gave it an 8. Did you? I, what did yeah, I give it, it again? I can't remember. You gave it a 9. No, 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 definitely wasn't a nine. <laughs> eight point five or an eight. I think it might be an eight. I don't know, check it. Yeah, I give it an eight as well. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. Hitman. Uh, I my my notes were fun gameplay look, lots of creative freedom, like you said. Uh, look, there's lots of replay value in it, which is a good thing because that's kind of the whole point of the game. That's what these games yeah. are based on. Um. Uh. There's a lack of levels without the expansion pass which is a thing expansion pass is a good and bad thing because it gives you hitman one and two's levels yeah which uh is obviously great gives you more levels um but because you don't have hitman's one and two's levels the story is so heavily reliant on them that Mm -hmm. unless you get the expansion pass and play through them or if you've played hitman one or two the story falls totally flat um Mm -hmm. what i would say though is that with the creativeness there's actually challenges there's incentives to go back and replay it and figure out how you yeah, can do it differently, do which is awesome. Like, and the gunplay and everything's fun, but you're right, kids, yeah, it can get good. a bit chaotic, and uh, if you if you get caught once, then you go, fuck, I need to yeah, start yeah. again. Like, um, yeah, and if so, you've done a lot of stuff, then... Yeah, exactly. So I've got uh, a 7.5 out of 10. I had a 7.5 as well. Oh, really? So I think for the vote, I... Far Cry. Yeah, I'm voting Far Cry. Uh, One... So I'll agree with you, but the reason I'm agreeing with you isn't just because, you know, oh, Hitman shit, it's not the best. I think Far Cry 3 was like the benchmark of Far Cry games, and that's where the bar was set, you can't go any higher than that. And then after it, the kind of, the Far Cry 4, a bit of Far Cry 5, I mean, I played it 50 minutes of it, if that. Did you just feel like Far Cry 3 clones? Yeah. The gameplay that I've seen from this one have just been that it's kind of taken everything that they learned in Far Cry 3 and bumped it up even more. What I would say with that one is see if you thought of uh, the Halo comparison again, like what Halo uh, Infinite is to Halo 3. Yeah. Think of Far Cry as a similar thing, but Far Cry is a bit better than Halo Infinite is to Halo 3. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Not yeah. not as good, but it's, it's better than Halo Infinite is story-wise comparatively. Um, the best bit, the best bit's actually a post credit surprise that I won't spoil in Far Cry Six. That was the bit I got most excited about. I was like, oh, um, so yeah. So Far Cry's there. So next up, I think I'm the only one to have played Death Store, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll give you a yeah. rundown on that. So this game is you play. It's a real shame I had the music synced up to this so well, but can't play the music. Um, so this game is a indie game. I think it was made by two people, if I'm correct. Uh, which is Ooh. insane. Uh, it is amazing. Like I can't. Uh, it's just such a good game. So basically, what you are is you're a crow who goes into the world and collects souls, uh, and you're basically like um, like a grim reaper, right? But you're not the grim reaper. Uh, you're, you're like one of his minions, like a Santa's he- elf sort of thing, right? So you go out and you have to collect these souls. But what happens is your soul at the start of the game that you're meant to collect gets stolen and put into this thing called the Death Store. Right, and you have to go around and defeat all these other avenues of bad guys to collect souls to then get through the door to get to your soul that you've lost so that you don't get killed for not doing your job right Mm -hmm. Um, so that's the premise of it the gameplay wise awesome like honestly just awesome it's uh, you've got the dash you've got the parry let me just find my notes while the clip's playing Uh, Oh no! So the art style, as you can see, is just gorgeous. Lovely, lovely little charming art style. Uh, the progression really good. Really feels like you're earning your way forward and leveling up fast. 
and like you're incentivized like the abilities are really cool you're incentivized to go out and find them the combat's fun and challenging it's really easy to die in this but you can get into a rhythm once you get the rhythm going great fun story is mm. really intriguing and the ending i thought was actually really really good um especially some of the twists in the story too uh it's a bit like what you said about the Psychonauts camera though Juan. occasionally the perspective can get in the way because obviously it's a kind of top down thing it can get in the way a little bit um what is it that's making noise that is cutting you out it might be my laptop <laughs> <laughs> is it taking off it is taking off uh it should it should slow down here because i've turned the video off um it nailed what it was going for and the boss battles are just amazing that's where it really shines is the boss battles okay um did you catch most of that anyway yeah 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 right okay cool um cairns do you have anything or do you want to do the rundown of house of ashes what do i have anything what oh god am i cutting out that much yeah a wee bit yeah right hold on i'll fix that tell me if this is any better we can hear you fine just now yeah. So like your Discord. Is it my Discord? Right, so the recording should be fine, basically. Yeah. But are you getting a lot of fan noise from me? No, just cut out. All right, that's fine. Okay, cool. Um, so, well, here's House of Ashes, Cairns. Okay. Uh, all I'd say, House of Ashes has come from a studio, or I think it's a studio, right, Fair, that The makers is, of Until Dawn, yeah. Yeah, Until Dawn... Um, Man of Medan. Little Hope, yep. Man of Medan, which are all like similar games. It's all kind of a big series that they're making. Well, it's not like, related, but it's, it's all the series, and it's all based on like your decision making, and uh, all of them are mainly based like horror. Like you, there's a monster, or maybe it's your mind, or maybe it's this or that, and you've no idea, and you have to make a decision uh, while you're playing. And the great thing about um, House of Ashes is that it's a multiplayer that you can do so you can play it with your friends, you play couch co-op or you can play online and you're making these decisions and you have to make them and you don't know the way Ferg and I played it was some he, he's making decisions with blocked off screens so you can't tell what he's doing and he can't tell what I'm doing and you're just making your decision as you can so everything you choose is what you think is the best option of how to play and how you would get out of the situation. And I'm not gonna lie, this game was phenomenal. Like, it was so good. Uh, the story was great. The um, way you can choose anything, like anything you can choose, phenomenal. It is like every decision you make could have an impact. And not just every decision you make, every decision the person you're playing with makes could also have an impact on how it goes so you're like i really hope they're doing well so that i do well we want to help each other and there's points where you can sit there and be like he's in trouble do i help him or do i just save myself like what what is the best option to do and it's it's fantastic and it could be vital either way um i i really enjoyed this game i thought it was fantastic like what i would say about the two of them having played both of them um yeah well, my note, I'll give you my notes on House of Ashes first, right? And then I'll give you the comparison between the two. That makes sense, doesn't it? So, yeah. House of Ashes, I had actually a positive and negative column initially. So, first positive, minimal glitches, right? Which yeah. is, like, that, that sounds stupid, but see, this series has been plagued by really bad glitches. Like, Man of Medan yeah. was nigh on unplayable. Little Hope would crash occasionally, had a couple of really bad ones initially. House of Ashes... And you'd have to wait for patches. Yeah, totally. Whereas House of Ashes actually was really really well polished um the choices were incredibly difficult more than any game in the yeah. series probably including until dawn i think the choices were harder than in until dawn actually yeah um and probably more meaningful uh, and the story was really captivating uh my only negative in the negative column was that seeing the monster so early makes i know i've just shown it in the clip but it makes it like less scary it was shown in the trailer anyway yeah i know but yeah. it, it makes it it makes it less scary um yeah every choice having a card co having a consequence is a thing that happens in these games we know that uh story had very good twists i thought this one cairns um yeah. like really it was the best i think out, I, of the, out of the series so far like the dark pictures anthology which is everything after until dawn 
mm-hmm. it's the best one in the series by a country mile. Yeah, um, absolutely. What I would say... And compa- I, oh, hmm? No, on you go, on you go, on you go. I was going to say, I love how in each of those series, it's always something different, and you can't, you don't know... Yeah, you can't predict what, what it is. is. Yeah. Like, for instance, one could be, it's all in your head. Or one could be it's something affecting you, or it could be real monsters. You don't know. It could be something like it's just something all over the place. Like you have no idea what this threat is, or if it's real, if it's fake, or what. So it's like it's really interesting, like how they do that. Speaking what between the between the two of them, um, although I think this is the best one so far. And I, I, I think I really think it, oh, this is going to be a hard decision for me. Uh, but, well, I scored them both. So, what did you give House of Ashes, Cairns? Nine point five. Nine point five. I gave it an eight point five, um, and I gave Death Store a nine. Um, no, I, I'll die in this hill. House of Ashes was well phenomenal. Hear, hear me out here, right? House of Ashes was very good. Like it was like playing a movie, and it was the best that has been so far. There were points in it where I was like. This could be a little bit better paced, could be a bit faster. The scary thing could have been better because you saw the monster too early. I think that was a mistake they made. That was a wee bit of a misstep. Um, there was one point where did we not have, I don't know if it was a controller problem or a malfunction or something, and it got one of our people killed. I can't remember what it was. No, I think it was we just... Fucked up. Um, yeah, we just fucked Fair us. Enough. Fair enough. Um, well... Death Store, however, like again, made by two people, incredible feat. It's honestly like, I, I'm not very much of an indie kind of game person, to be perfectly honest. Mm-hmm. This is the first year I've played a lot of indies, and I was just blown away by how well polished, how intriguing, how charming the game was as well. Especially when it's dealing with a concept of someone who's going out and taking people's souls, and it still felt quite heartwarming a lot of the time. And the oh mm-hmm. man, the actual fight mechanics and everything in it. We're just insane, um. But then the, the choice in house. Uh, this is a difficult decision because the choice in House of Ashes the were thing insane. Is house, of like... Ashes, <laughs> house of Ashes. I know there's a lot of games you. Go, oh yeah, I want to go back to go back and play that. But then you never go back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I really want to go back and play House of Ashes. I would go back and play that with someone else. I think that would yeah. be great fun playing, and you have the reactions. And it is like you say because it, it's it's a, it's like a movie. Yeah. But. It could turn out differently. Yeah, the different endings add something to it, but you can't and say having, you can't say that for Death Store. To be fair. Yeah, and if you played it with someone else, their decisions could make it turn out a complete different way. I'm absolutely leaving this up to Juan, by the way, because I love both these games. Uh, so I, I'm voting House of Ashes. Well, I'm voting Death Store. Juan, what are you going with? Uh, I understand both arguments. I think I really want to play both games now, just purely from what you've said about them. But I think because it was made by two people and two people, like I can't even do a group project with two people and like when I work. So to make a game that that's well polished. I'm gonna verify that before you do this vote, right? It's <laughs> bullshit. You, you've got on with him every time. <laughs> I make compelling arguments. You're, You're wrong. Fuck you. Yeah, two people. There was uh, there was artists involved, but the the there were two people that were the game designers. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, which is a no mean thing, is yeah. considering people, some developers have, you know, 15, 15 odds, you know, yeah. plus. So that's, that's, that's what I'm going with, sorry. That's fair. Uh, Me, honestly, like, whoever nah. won this bracket, I would have nah. said, would win nah. the next the next round nah. anyway. Like, yeah. two insanely good games. Like, I'd, I'm actually, I didn't realise they were so close together because I hadn't looked at the table, really. Um, uh, are, you, are you filling that in for me, by the way? No, I'm not. Oh, right, okay. Um, I'll do it. But, uh, like, House of Ashes, like, I, I, I didn't know they were so close. I'm actually gutted that House of Ashes is out already. Because yeah, I think it's better I, than a lot of... I'm not going to lie, I think that would have... Uh, that's... That could have gone a long way. Oh, no. What's wrong, Juan? Just looking at more games coming up soon. Oh, you can well, well. Well, we can discuss that after we're, we're on a time schedule here, right? So last bracket. Oh no, it's not. <laughs> right. That was the last one. No. So next up is it takes two versus Mario, versus Mario Party. Party. 
Oh, so, very similar games, I'd say. I'm I'm no, voting it takes two, no, no. hands down. Yeah, I'd say I'd yeah. say it takes two as well, purely because it's not a rehash. Yeah, it's a it's a great it's a, like it's just but also it's like just an incredible game. Like yeah, cool. I think it's just better, like it's better in every way. To be perfectly honest, um, built different. Yeah, uh, then Far Cry and Death Store. This one might be a discussion. I would actually vote Death Store here. I think Far, Far Cry. I think Far Cry is probably the best Far Cry since Far Cry Three. But Death Store is just like I, I've not felt that way about a game. Oh, it's not often you feel that way about a game when you play it. Put it that way. Yeah. Far Cry. Far well, Cry getting to the well, end. Got voted out. So <laughs> Far Cry. Far Cry. You got to the end of it, and you're going. That's it. Okay. Cool. Death Store. You're like. That was just like you know when you sit and you think about something for a couple minutes, you're just like, yeah. wow, like wow, I can't believe how much I enjoyed that. I was the same with House of Ashes as well, Cairns. To be fair, that's why I let Juan decide because I couldn't decide between the two. Again, I'm probably gonna go with um, Death Store because Far Cry, big multinational company, Death Store, two people. Fair play. Right. Man, the game. Last one. It takes two versus Death Store. We don't. Oh yeah. No, we don't. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I'm going. It takes two. I'm also. I'm going. It takes two as well. As good as Death Store is, uh, yeah. like it's Game just. Far, man, but time to go to bed. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I thought you were bailing out of the video there, Juan. <laughs> <laughs> Death uh, Store dead at last. Dump. Yeah, no, I mean, honestly, like, that game is... I can't talk highly enough about it. I, I would recommend, see if you have... Like, it, it's all, it's really cheap as well. Like, it's a, it's like a tenner or something. It might not even be a tenner, but it's like... If you have the time and you've, like, that ah, loose end, I'd play it. Honestly, I'd recommend it to everyone. Great game. Um, same with It Takes Two, to be fair. Uh, so that's the end of that bracket.